Righto. Well, in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can install Replicant on your Replicant supported Android device. Now, for those who don't know, Replicant is a completely free and open source GNU approved Android operating system. It has no proprietary components whatsoever. If you install this on your device, the only proprietary software that's going to be running is the proprietary modem and the proprietary bootloader. So basically your device is going to be 99.9% .9 free and open source and freedom respecting. Unfortunately, at the moment, there really aren't any devices with free modems and free bootloaders. I think even the Pinephone and the Librem 5 don't have either one of those things, but you're going to be a lot of the way to freedom. Now, before we start this video, I first have to say this isn't the same thing as de-googling. This will de-google your device. You're not going to have your device phoning home to Google if you do this. You're not going to have any Google services on your device after you've done this. But de-googling typically involves some amount of proprietary software. Most of the major Android ROMs out there do have proprietary components. Replicant does not. Now consequently that means you're not going to have any proprietary drivers. So that means a few things on your device aren't going to work. So for instance for this guide I'm going to be using the Samsung Galaxy S3. There are a few other Replicant supported devices. But on this particular device, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth doesn't work without proprietary drivers and nor does the front camera. So if I wanted to use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this device, I would have two options. Either install the proprietary drivers, which I would not recommend all because that's going to compromise your freedom. Or you can use a USB dongle to enable those features, which at some point I will look into. But with all of that said, let's get started on this video. And I'm going to show you how you can install Replicant on your device right now on the Linux Lounge. Indeed, as I said during the opening, today we're going to go ahead and install Replicant. Now if you want to do that, first thing that we've got to do is get some files that are necessary to install Replicant. So the first thing that you've got to do is go over to the Replicant website, which you can see up here. You can just search Replicant in your search engine and it'll come up. Now once you're here, you've got to go over to the Wiki tab and here you can see a list of devices that are supported by Replicant. Most of them, in fact pretty much all of them, are Samsung devices and most of them are fairly old Samsung devices so unfortunately if you want to go without proprietary software you're going to have to sacrifice having a modern phone but thankfully most of these devices are fairly, well very very inexpensive most of the time. And there's a few tablets here as well if you just want to kind of dip your toes into the water and get a completely free software tablet and there's a few versions of Replicant you can get as well. If you have an unmaintained device, you can install an older version of Replicant. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to use the Galaxy S3 version of Replicant. So we go ahead and click on that and it will tell us what the latest version for our device is. Now, there's two versions here. There's Replicant 6, which is based on Android Marshmallow, which I know is a little bit old. Um, but in my experience, Android Marshmallow is kind of the oldest version of Android you can comfortably run. So if you install this, it should be fine. But if you want, you can try out Replicant 10, which is based on a much newer version of Android, but it is still work in progress. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to go ahead and install Replicant 6. So just click on the latest image. And now you will get a list of devices which are supported. And all you need to do, really, is download this first file here, Replicant 6.0. Um, we need that file. Of course, I've already got that downloaded. And then you need to go ahead and download the recovery, which we need the first file here as well. Now, you can download the checksum and that kind of thing if you want to verify the file. Um, but since it seems unlikely to me that these people have been hacked, and it seems also unlikely that we need to verify it to me, um, and it also won't affect functionality or anything, if you're like very security conscious, uh, you can check if these files have been tampered with. And I would actually probably recommend that you do, but for the purposes of this video, we're just not going to do that. Now, once you have all these files, you're ready to move on to the next step. Now, the next thing that you're going to need to do for this tutorial is go ahead and install Heimdall, which is basically a utility which will allow us to flash things onto our Samsung devices. Now, there's no one way to do this because every Linux distribution is different. But for me, because for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm running Arch Linux. So, of course, it's going to be the same if you're running Manjaro or anything. Uh, Heimdall is actually in the default uh, Arch repository. So, we can just open up a terminal and type in sudo pacman s Heimdall. And then once we've done that, we're ready to go. 
Now once you've gone ahead and downloaded all of those files, next we have to go ahead and put the device into download mode in order to install a custom recovery. From that custom recovery, we can then go ahead and install Replicant. Now in order to put your device into download mode, you have to hold the volume down, press the home button, and then press the power button. And you have to do that once your device is powered off. So if it's on, go ahead and turn it off. And now go ahead and press volume down, home button, and power on. And you can see you get this warning message. Go ahead and press the volume up. And then you've gone ahead and entered download mode. The next step is to go ahead and get a USB cable, connect one end to your computer, and then go ahead and connect the other end into your phone. And once you've done that, you are now ready to go ahead and install the custom recovery. So go ahead and move back over to your computer, and then we'll go ahead and install that recovery. Now, once we've got our device in download mode connected to our computer, the next step is that we need to go ahead and flash our custom recovery. So first things first, go ahead and open up a terminal in the folder where you downloaded all the files I asked you to earlier. And now we've got this terminal open, we can go ahead and run a command from the official replicant installation instructions. Now this command varies from device to device, but across a lot of devices, it's very much the same. Since we're using a Galaxy S3 here, as you can see, the command to run is Heimdall flash dash dash boot, the location of our recovery, so let's copy paste that in, Heimdall flash dash dash boot, then let's go ahead and drag and drop our recovery file to get the directory that it's in easily, then dash dash recovery, which paste that in, and then let's go ahead and copy and paste this again, and the whole command that we need to run to install this custom recovery is Heimdall flash dash dash boot, the location of our recovery, dash dash recovery, the location of our recovery again. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And then it should go ahead and install it on our device. It might take a second to do it, but as you can see, it's uploading the bootloader, uploading our recovery. And once that's done, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, the next step here actually takes place on the device itself, because once we ran that command, the device should have gone ahead and automatically rebooted into the replicant recovery. That's what we want because what we're going to do from here is go ahead and wipe some partitions so then we can go ahead and install Replicant. Now it goes without saying that this is the point of no return. If you have any data that you want to keep, make sure that you've backed it up. And once you've gone ahead and done that, we can go ahead and wipe the partitions. So the first thing to do is go ahead and tap Advance, Wipe System Partition, yes, and then it will go ahead and wipe our system partition. The next thing that we want to go ahead and do is perform a factory reset. So go back to the main page, factory reset, full factory reset, yes, and then it will go ahead and wipe everything. And once it's gone ahead and done with that, it's a good idea generally to just go ahead and wipe the cache partition. So let's go ahead and do that, should be quite quick. And the next thing that we wanted to go ahead and do is get this device ready to finally install Replicant. So go back to the main page, tap apply update from ADB, and then we can go ahead and install the Replicant operating system from our computer. And finally, we really are on the home stretch now. All that's left to do is go ahead and install Replicant on our device. So go ahead and navigate to the directory where you downloaded all of our Replicant files. And what we'll do from here is go ahead and copy the Replicant operating system onto our device. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We just have to use this command, adb sideload. And then we need to go ahead and give it our replicant download. So just go ahead and drag and drop that into the terminal. So our full command is adb sideload and then the location of our replicant zip. Hit enter on that. And what it will go ahead and do is install replicant. And if you look at your device now, you can see that it's going ahead and installing the whole thing. Now this might take a while as you can imagine because we're installing a full operating system. But once that's done, in theory, we should have replicant installed on our device. And there we go, the command has now finished running. It did take a second to install everything, but that's to be expected. So now, let's go back onto our device and reboot into our replicant system. And here we are, back on device. Now as you can see, it hasn't automatically rebooted or anything after we went ahead and installed replicant. So we're going to have to go ahead and manually do that. So let's go ahead and reboot into the system now. And here's the part where we'll see if replicant went ahead and successfully installed. And as you can see, we've got the Replicant boot logo, so that's a good start. And here we are on the Replicant setup screen. Now, first boot did take a while, but that's pretty normal. Just give it some patience. 
So now let's go ahead and set things up. Now I haven't got a SIM card in here or anything so it does mean that we're going to kind of have to just use it offline. So press next, SIM card missing, next, skip, and privacy guard is probably a good idea to have on, next, start. Now as you can see it didn't ask for our Wi-Fi password or anything like that and that's because as I said earlier Replicant is fully free and open source software so the proprietary drivers needed for Wi-Fi aren't installed by default and nor is any Google Play service or anything like that. If you want to use the internet on here you're going to need to put in a SIM card with a mobile data connection or go ahead and get yourself a compatible USB Wi-Fi adapter or something like that. But as you can see we have Replicant fully installed. It's pretty much Lineage OS with a few extra things added and all the proprietary bits removed. So yeah, that's Replicant OS. Hopefully I should have some more videos out about it in the future. But for now, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this guide and found it useful. Go ahead and enjoy your Replicant device and let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. But as I said, that's it for today's video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.